Hey guys, how's it going? You're watching Visual Intelligence and welcome back to another uh, very exciting Cinema 4D tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how I made this kind of a uh, abstract looking uh, 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 photo. Uh, as you can see, it's just a sphere with uh, some displacement and uh, some more like matrix looking uh, effects. I uh, hope this is going to be uh, very easy. I guess it's going to be a little bit long, so um you know get prepared for that as well uh so this is how uh it looks inside of uh cinema 4d and uh, what we will be doing is uh, doing some color correction inside of photoshop and adding the background and such to make it look really cool so first let's create a new document we want a sphere obviously we want to change these segments to 50 since we really want a lot of segments let me just go to ground shading uh, lines display so you guys can see these segments you can do that as well so we want 50 for these segments and we want icosahedron for the type so uh, so that the uh, segments actually or the polygons actually are uh, even so next step is to add a displacer and you can do that by holding this button and then go straight to the displacer and then what we want to do is we want to make it as a child of the sphere so let's drag and drop until the, we see the down arrow on the sphere and then you can just release your mouse well, what we want to do with the sphere, uh, with the displacer, is we want to go to our shading, and we want noise shader. Let's go to the uh, shader. Let's change the global scale to something like seven hundred or so. Let's do seven hundred. Let's see that. Let's increase that a little bit more. Maybe 730 or 740 uh, will look good. Let's go back. And what we want to do now is we want to add another layer actually. And if we click right now, you can see that we have our noise layer. And we can add <coughs> more shaders and more layers just like in Photoshop. Or we can add even images and such. So what we want to do is we want to add another noise and we want to click that I think we're going to keep default for the second noise let's click on the displacer once again and let's click on the shader and what we want to do is we want to uh, make the opacity of the second noise to 50% and this will uh, kind of make this kind of effect which we, really, we actually want so next step is to add the sphere under the subdivision surface or the uh, hypernerves if you are on R13 or earlier version so what you want to do is you want to alt click this uh, button and it will automatically uh, make it a child of the make the sphere a child of the subdivision make sure to have the sphere selected at first so if you render right now you can see our sphere it's looking pretty good for uh, now I mean it, it, it uh, obviously looks crappy but <laughs> you know uh, that's exactly what we want. So let's double click on let's create. Uh, let's double click on the materials panel and then double click on the material that we created. So what we want to do is we want to change the color to something like uh, not quite white, but you know something uh, really bright. Let's go to the specular. We want a uh, relatively big width, so let's go with uh, uh, ninety maybe full 100 why not or uh, let's decrease that a little bit to something like 95 or 96 looks good we want the height to, to be uh, not as uh, you know high maybe 11 look good and uh, what we want to do is we want to go to the displacement and and uh, check that and we want the texture to be noise as you might have expected so I want to change the height to 10 centimeters maybe 
you want to go to our noise let's click that and you want to go to the global skin and change it to 150 so let's hit render right now and see what we have actually let's actually draw drop drag and drop the material onto our sphere and um, that's looking pretty good um, I think we're missing something Let's uh, check the uh, sub polygon displacement and uh, render once more. This will definitely take more time. And that's not what we want. Let's go and I'll check that. Let's go back to our previous scene, actually. And let's take a look at the material. Let's cheat a little bit. Why not? So what I did was I changed the noise to blistered turbulence or something. So let's go back to our material and let's go to displacement and let's go to our noise. We want to change that to uh, blistered turbulence, which is the second one, obviously. And uh, let's change the seed a little bit. Let's go back and render our stuff and see how they look I think that's looking pretty good we might even want to add some bump let's add that let's go and add more noise and you can be really random with that uh, it really doesn't matter add booyah why not and let's render and see how that looks yeah that's looking uh, really good I guess let's change the uh, let's change the type to Maybe electric. See electric. Yeah, just be random with that. Let's go out to our displacer. Let's go to our object and let's change the height a little bit. And this will make it, uh, you know, not as circular, I guess. Let's mess with the strength. It can be really random with that. It really doesn't matter. What determines the shape is actually the bigger noise, so you can actually go ahead and change the seed of that to get a different result, as you can see. So what we want to do now is we want to go to our sphere, we want to duplicate that by control dragon, and we want to remove the displacer, or maybe we want to keep it. Let's go to our object and then change the strength to something like 40. And let's go to our uh, sphere, scale that up quite a bit by increasing the radius. Maybe we want less segments, something like um, 30. Yeah, that looks good. Let's go and uh, make it a child of a uh, at atom array object by, uh, you know, just like we did here, you can just hold alt and click on the atom array. A button or you can just uh, create an atom and make it a child and make it a sphere child of the atom array what you want to do now is you want to change the radius to something like 1 or maybe like 0.5 and want, want to change the sphere radius to something like 0.7 and you want to change the cylinder radius to something like 0.2 you know something really really you know not noticeable maybe point one even let's go with that I want we want to create a new uh, material we want to uncheck the color and then check the luminance maybe check the color why not and then remove this back or we don't want that and we want to drag it onto our atom array at this point, I think we want less segments. And that's really the part where you where you adjust what you, what you want and, you know, get the effect you're going for. So that's looking pretty good. What we want to do now is we want to go and add a uh, circle. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe we want to decrease the radius a little bit. Let's 
let's position the camera where we want what we want to do is we want to maybe rotate it a little bit we want to create another sphere or circle sorry and we want it to be let's say 0.05 radius and uh, you guessed right we want a sweep nerves and we want both circles on that sweep nerves and we want to go to our sweep and then change the end scale to or the end growth maybe no let's go to our detail let's go to our detail and then change the scale on the end to zero something like that and let's control click on somewhere in the curve and we want we want this kind of shape and what this basically does if uh, if we if we solo this layer by uh, I'm using magic solo for that I can uh, get that for free it's really awesome uh, tool you can see that it's kind of uh, you know not even uh, geometry or whatever uh, I really like it this way who cares let's uh, control C control uh, V to duplicate this sweep and let's rotate it uh, something like that so that's looking pretty good so I think we're almost there you can see our uh, result it looks uh, really uh, you know crappy and such but uh, decrease the radius to something like 0.1 it doesn't really uh, seem to be uh, visible also apply the same material that we applied on our atom array on that and that's looking pretty good I, I, I really like it so uh, what I did for the lighting was I used a preset from my motion graphics it's uh, the Illuminati it's very um, it's really awesome and it's free you can get that if you double click you can see the light setup you get if you uh, Click render right off the bat. You can see your uh, your result looking pretty good. And uh, let's go back to our material. I think we want more bump. Let's go with uh, you know 92. Let's let's not be subtle, so we can see our effect. And uh, let's change the uh, type to maybe cluster turbulence again. It's not looking good. Uh, it's not looking bad. I zoom in and see how that looks yep that's looking pretty good in my opinion so yeah what what I did was uh, I also added a light uh, change, I, I went to the details and then go to fall off and change it to inverse square physically accurate and I did decrease the radius quite a bit let's go to general and change it to add a warm kind of tint to it and then I went ahead and uh, positioned it somewhere around here let's click render and see how that looks it's kind of a rim light or something I mean not a photographer but uh I know things about light. Who cares? So that's looking fantastic in my opinion. Let's go and uh, prepare that for our. And uh, the cool thing is, it doesn't take that long to render. I mean, you can clearly go to effect and go to uh, your uh, render settings first and go to effects and add an ambient occlusion, and this will make it look uh, a bit better, I guess. I think we're going to keep the ambient occlusion gives us more details which is exactly what we want and what you also want to do is you want to go to our output I want to go with 1920 by 1080 if you are doing animation if you want to animate this rotate it or make a camera and rotate it or whatever 
you can change the frame range to all frames and then save it as you know png sequence or whatever or avi movie or even a mob like a uh, quick time movie or whatever but i'm going to go with jpeg and i'm going to save it to our to my desktop as um sphere random again i'm not the best uh, you know for a given name so <laughs> whatever let's check the alpha channel it's uh, really important to do that and uh, by the way i uh, just realize how stupid am i for trying to give a alpha channel to a jpeg go with png and uh, you know don't really uh, mind me that much so png alpha channel i mean jpeg will also give you a alpha channel but it's going to be in another uh, image and it's going to be messy and i don't really want that so let's position our sphere where we want and let's hit render it's going to take more time since we are going to render a larger image i think i'm going to be uh, making this tutorial a two-part series uh i'm not sure if that's the case but uh, if it is then uh, in the next part we are going to uh, uh, add the background and uh, add the color correction and make it look sexy so see you guys on the next tutorial